So essentially you've got their name, you've got their email, their contact information, and then you've got their website URL. Um, and if you really want to get fancy with it, you can also add their domain authority, which is essentially a metric that tells you how authoritative their website is and how valuable a link from their site might be. It's a vague metric. It's not spot on, but uh, it is a good indicator of the overall quality of a site in Google's eyes. Where would you get that uh, domain authority from? So there's a lot of different ways to do this. You can install the way that I use is a uh, Mozbar. It's a Chrome extension that you can just, it's a browser extension. You can just install and literally as you visit a website, um, it'll show you in the uh, extension right there. It'll just give you a number or you could even turn it on and it'll show you right on the search results page, the domain authority of each listing. Nice. And then you uh, are typing that straight into the, the sheet. Uh, and what, what are you doing with that information? So um, once you have that, if you add the domain authority, you can sort them by their domain authority. So that way you're focusing on trying harder, if you will, to build relationships with the higher domain authority site owners. Uh, because that, that relationship might, not necessarily, but it might have a bigger impact on your links and your um, promotion efforts. Very cool. Yeah, we, we definitely do something similar um, with ours. We use a, a few different kind of authority ranking <laughs> pieces of information. And it's interesting to see you use Moz Toolbar. And there's a, there's a few different other ways you might want to do that to just... Uh, rank, yeah, maybe those influencers based on yeah how much influence they have, and that's what this domain authority is really showing: how much influence, um, how much reach, uh, how much traffic uh, essentially is going to to their site. Exactly. Yep. Cool. All right. So once we've kind of sorted this out, we can go. All right, top ten. Let's you know maybe get a phone call with these, get really personal, do something special for them. The bottom, you know. 10, 20%, um, maybe don't spend as much time on them. I like the way of organizing this to really uh, prioritize your efforts, the whole 80, 80, 20 rule. Yeah, absolutely. And what I would do is, um, like you said, those, those top 10 people actually take the time to reach out to them, uh, comment on their blog, share their content, follow them on social media, share their posts, comment on their posts, like basically anything that would make you feel good as a blog owner do for them and it'll make them feel good. Even, even the most like Neil Patel and all these other people who are super um, popular, they still like, you know, hearing, wow, this is awesome. You're a really awesome person. As long as it's genuine, obviously. But so take yeah. the time with those top 10. Yeah, absolutely. Um, building relationships uh, is, is going to take you places. So uh, we've, we've got that information. We've got all in the spreadsheet. Um, we've identified who those, who those top ones are. Uh, what, what's the, the, the next thing we need to do? So what I really like to do is um, use these influencers in my content strategy. So basically, the reason, they, they've become influencers for a reason. They um, are on top of their game. They're writing about the stuff that people care about, that, are people, that people are searching for. So I take their websites and I'll plug them into a content analysis tool like BuzzSumo or Ahrefs and look to see what their top five pieces of content are. And then I'll overlap, I'll, I'll manually review them and say, okay, you know, five of these 10 top sites is talking about this specific topic. Maybe I should talk about that too. 